When we started this, we knew nothing about World War I. But then we met historian Neil Storey and he talked to us about the soldiers, where they came from, where they went to fight and what life was like in the trenches. They would have been dug quite deep. The snipers would be waiting for you to stick your head above there. So you had to have a trench that's deep enough for a man to raise his hand, really, for the snipers not to get you. But if you did want to look over the top, so you have a mirror in the bottom, a mirror at the top, and they're angled. And when you look at them, you look at the mirror, you've got to kind of look forward. That's your basic food. Biscuit. A hard tech biscuit. Go on, try and break that. Easy yeah, yes. fine. Yes. Yeah. That's easy as. Now, why do we have a tin helmet or a shrapnel helmet? Well, the point was the gunfire that used to fire off above would come down. And that injure our lads, so we've got to protect our head. This is a gun shell. This fires out of the back of the gun because this is full of the explosive that ch sends this towards the enemy. See, I bet you never thought in a million years that you'd go to school and be taught about hand grenades. And I'm thinking, well, go out and have a little bit of a hand grenade practice outside. Yeah! Okay. Sophie and Nicole from the Norwich Writers' Centre came in to help us. They talked about what we have seen and done. Good afternoon everyone, it's lovely to be here. And today we are going to do a bit of creative writing based around some of the activities you've been doing. Now, And asked us questions that made us think carefully about World War I and in particular how we might feel if we was a soldier in the trenches and what we would miss from home. Well, what sorts of things would be on your mind, do you think? You worry about being killed, yes? Family. Who else would be worried about their family? What about thinking about the sorts of things that you would normally be doing at home? What sort of things would you normally be doing? Climbing trees. Climbing trees? Yeah, you really can't do that in the trenches because you'll be a really big target then. Because if I put my head above the trench, what's likely to happen? Bang. Bang and? Die. Could die or you could be wounded. And what you think about the war is that you would be, you think that during the war you would feel cold, angry, sad, sick and ill. Okay, some good words there. Well done, Lola. We wanted to see where some of the soldiers from Norwich were buried and Neil said the cemetery nearby there was a special war grave. Could we have a bit of information about the graves we're going to see? Yes, well today we're here at Norwich Cemetery and in the centre of this area here it's something known as a Commonwealth War Grave, a soldier's, sailors and airmen's graveyard. And it contains soldiers from both world wars, but we've come to really pay our respects to the men of the First World War. And they're men from, well, they're, they're from all over the world. And when we go there, you see if you can spot where they're from.
What a special memorial this is. You'll find these all over the world. Wherever there was conflict in World War I, you'll find Commonwealth war graves marked with this, which is the Cross of Sacrifice. But what have you got imposed in that cross? It's a sword, a symbol of battle. And then engraved on here, their name liveth for evermore. So that their story is recorded in stone. So before we move off, I'd like to share a special poem with you. It's often said at many of the remembrance events all around Great Britain and in fact all around the world. We'll speak one verse of it and when I've finished those verses I'd like you to repeat the last words which are, we will remember them. They shall grow not old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning. We will remember them. Thank you. We felt it was important to be respectful to the soldiers. We wanted them to know that we have been thinking about them. And how they have inspired us. And some of the things they might have been thinking about. I don't want to die even though I know war is to kill. If I got to choose, I would not be part of the war, but if I have to, I will. War is not fair. It's not fair to kill people. I'm running out of time to say goodbye to nannies, granddads, mum and dad. When I was growing up, all I wanted to do was play outside. But mum said it was dangerous. Now I am on a boat, drifting away to somewhere, and I am scared. I want to go home. I miss everyone. I am ill and hungry, and if I leave the trench, I will get shot. I want everything to go back to what it was. I want to go home, please. When I walked into this graveyard, I thought that it was a really nice place. I saw my great granddad's grave and um, he was, um, he died when he was 20 and every um, year we come here to um, give respect to my granddad. Mr Story, when we get back to school we're going to be working with a songwriter and we're going to make a song um, using all our poems. Sounds absolutely fantastic. And you know, so soldiers have always loved songs and music. They keep the morale up, but also they used to march to them. I think I've got a good song to share with you. Pack up your troubles. You just go something a bit like this, and you can imagine the boys marching along the long, long trail up the old front line in the mud and the water and the rain sloosing down the necks bouncing off their tin hats and they used to sing Pack up your troubles in your old kit bag and smile, smile, smile While you've a Lucifer to light your fags Smile boys, that's the style What's the use of worrying? It never was worthwhile So pack up your troubles in your old kit bag and smile Smile, smile. This is one of the most special places that I know. It's been a very poignant visit.
My name's Millie Hurst, I'm a singer-songwriter, and I've been asked to work with the pupils at Wensum Junior School to see if I can turn their words into a song. The first step was to have a look at some of their writing, and I realised how much they'd learnt about World War One. Already I could see that there were some themes developing, and that inspired me to think about the style of song that I could write. What I really wanted, though, was to meet the children and to talk to them about their work and see if they agree with me about how their song, because really that's what it will be, should sound. It was great meeting the children and it really helped getting a feel for them and what they had done and what had inspired their words. Can any of you tell me about what you've been doing so far with the project? So we, we met Sergeant Story and we went to the Imperial War Museum and we went to the cemetery. When we were at the cemetery, we read some of our poetry out to the graves. We heard that lots of men in World War I sang songs and we wondered if you could turn some of our poetry into a song. I'd absolutely love to write a song using your poetry. I've actually been looking a little bit at what you did with the poetry workshop and what you read this morning. Um, and I was thinking about kind of themes and things that popped up that I might be able to use. Got a few of the lines that really jumped out to me. Um, I think one of them was, I want to go home, I want everything to go back to what it was, which I thought was a really interesting thing, that idea of sort of homesickness, I suppose, being away from home and being quite scared and lonely. Dear Mum and Dad, I am going to write a letter every day. It's the first day of the war and I have been given the job of a sniper. The Germans have woken, it's the end of my break. There is no need to fight because we are all the same. We just look different and talk different languages. Go into a more beautiful world. Bury me very close to home. Now it was time to turn them into a song. I needed a little help with that, so I called in my friend Ian Lowry, who's a long-term collaborator, musician and producer. I got a little bit emotional looking through them. But oh, you did? Yeah. <laughs> But we'll yeah, try and maybe. Some of that. Yeah, yeah, hopefully. Yeah, I think definitely in the vocal part. So when I first saw their writing, I think I was mostly impressed by their emotional, really mature responses, and they'd use some really beautiful words. So I instantly, as I was looking through the writing, I already had some ideas for how I might sort of pull that together. I want the song to kind of feel like it's a letter home to a family from a soldier. I think to really make it work, it would be good to turn this song into a film to complete the journey, to tell the story of what the children felt after all the activities they'd been through, learning about World War I. It was. 
to do.